happy uh, final day of the cannonball to you all. <laughs> I don't even know what day of the week it is. I think it's Monday today. The cannonball brain is uh, running full effect. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I can't even read my phone. I don't know what I'm doing. No clue. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Cannonball. Uh, today is our final day. We're leaving from Rome, Georgia to uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. And uh, there's only a few uh, late morning stragglers uh, still here. Uh, it's 7.20 in the morning, I believe. I was just looking at it. Can't remember. Cannonball brain. Uh, yeah, 7.21. Uh, everybody got out of here pretty early this morning. Uh, Tyler and I shared a room last night. And uh, thanks to Dean Dino uh, on my channel, uh, he had a reservation here uh, that couldn't be canceled somehow. They, they, they weren't allowing him to uh, cancel it out and get his money back. So we uh, took advantage of his room. He gave us all the information, and that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Dean. Um, we're going to figure out a way to get you some uh, cash for that, some Venmo or something. We tried to flip the uh, the charge uh, to our card this morning, and they were giving us all kinds of static, so we'll, we'll sort that out. Uh, anywho, Neil and uh, Doug took out of here early this morning. They wanted to pound out the miles uh, as early in the morning as possible. Uh, I was just pretty knackered. I was tired. I had to get a little bit more sleep, uh, so I got a solid uh, four and a half, five hours of sleep. Uh, Tyler was uh, really bushed too. He had to get some good sleep, so we uh, slept in. Anyway, we're getting ready to get on the road. Crush it out. Mm, we got Mutt and Jeff over here. That's what I'm calling them. <laughs> the one guy is on a 300 class uh, scoot, and uh, the other is on a Super Cub. And uh, this is my fault. This is officially my fault. Uh, Maybe I don't know. After. Only partially. After watching uh, my cannonball videos, uh, he went out and got this thing, and he's been prepping for uh, over a year to do the cannonball uh, based on me making it look easy. Uh, and I said, no, that's the magic of video editing, sir. The, the mind-numbing torture of sitting in that saddle for 12 hours a day, there's nothing easy about that. <laughs> he's doing all right, though. He's soldiering on. We're going to get breakfast somewhere, somehow. Uh, he needs caffeine. I need uh, a little bit of something in my stomach. I don't know what. And uh, we're going to go find a little bit of uh, breakfast on the way out of town. We need to fuel up and do all that stuff. So, are you on comms yet? You were on and then it went away. I heard it say that somebody was connected and then it went. Anyway, so, if we're, if we care about points at all, then we should get our fuel and food first and then take pictures to go out you know that way our delta isn't so long so uh i don't know we can look around see if there's something to eat coffee wise right around here get our fuel and then circle back here take the picture and hit the road cool sounds like a plan we're tired uh i'm not really ready for this to end but you know you get about seven or eight days into these things and the uh, the novelty wears off <laughs> <laughs> and you're just left with the mind-numbing uh, road chores. So, yeah, uh, we're ready to see this through and get it to the other side. Uh, and then I'm probably going to take a couple of days getting back home a little bit more leisurely. I don't think I've got it in me to do a cannonball on this. Or, sorry, that uh, uh, iron butt after a cannonball. So, anywho, we're going to get on the road and find some food. Because there's no free food at this very fancy hotel. They don't have continental breakfast. They don't even have free coffee. What the hell is that? You gotta buy everything here. Greedy, greedy. And here's the, uh, the ADV 150 boys from Houston. There he is. Ready to hit it? There he is. Morning. We're going to go find breakfast somewhere. We're not in a hurry today at all. Are you guys running uh, GMRS or what do you have here? Yeah, GMRS. What kind of radios are you using? A little Anytone 878. Cool. Yeah. Little Anytones, yeah. My, my PTT died on me. Oh, like, crap. Yeah. What did you have? What kind of? Well, there was a, it was a little battery operated. Oh, oh, I got you. A remote switch. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. And are they Bluetooth into your helmets or whatever? Yeah. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Neat idea, man. Oh, yeah, Cardos. And you just, how did you pair it up with the radio, though? That's interesting. Well, paired it up under the phone setting. Under phones? Oh, okay. One in the back. One of your two channels. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Our music goes to the to GPS and then so right. radio and cool, radio man. go into the Cardo. Cool. So you can use Cardo or if you get out of range with each other, your GMRS. Yeah, smart. <laughs> They're thinking it through. I'm ready when you're ready, sir. I don't know where we're going. Is the comm up? I think it died. I heard it say group connection lost, so I don't know. we'll sort it out. Got the trail 125 still in the game. How do we get out? Oh, there's out. My front tire feels squishy. I'm going to have to check these things. So, yeah, I don't know which way to go. I think left. Okay. Got to find food and fuel or however you want to look at it. Fuel for the bikes, fuel for us. I don't know which way to go. Uh, he's fighting with the comms. It was uh, connected, uh, and then I heard it say group connection lost, so I don't know. So apparently there's fuel this way because he's coming back to the hotel to take a picture. That means there must be food this direction too. We're just going to wander around for a couple minutes. There's the river. That's why it's so humid here. Good God. Let's find some fuel. Yeah, hey, there you are. Yeah, the comm was there, and then I heard it say connection lost when we were in the garage, but you're back. Uh, yeah, so this is Monday morning? Or is it Sunday today? What is today? I don't fucking know. Oh, it's Sunday. She See, that's how bad I am. <clears throat> yeah, I am totally scrambulated. So, it's Sunday morning. There's nothing going on in this uh, sleepy little town. Howdy. Uh, don't know who's open. Maybe I should search that, huh? We'll find something. We'll just write... Yeah, of course. There we go. I can't get over how nice it is to be able to accelerate away from a stop without the whole bike shuddering like it's going to self-destruct. Man, I lived with that for so long, I didn't realize that all that time it was that uh, torque drive in the back could have found a way to resolve that a lot sooner you don't always want to go buying you know 300 bucks worth of parts left right <laughs> does this fix it no okay there's another 300 bucks does this fix it okay so this looks like a main drag coming up here uh, well here's the Chevron I'm going left shagging left shag left bumpy bumpy Ooh, real bumpy. Ugh. Uh, get a full load of fuel. We could get coffee in here if they're open. Shit, it's it's dark in there, man. What? It, are there pumps open? I hope the pumps are. I know, man. It's reminding me of 21 Cannonball when it, we would get in in the evenings and everybody was closed at 6 p.m. Grocery stores were closed at 6 p.m. No food to be had. I was getting so pissed off because there was nothing to eat. I'd ride all day expecting dinner when I arrived and nothing. I went hungry. I went hungry a couple of days. There was, I think I went 36 hours without any food except for like, you know, granola bars. Oh, I was getting really pissed. Oh, absolutely. You can, are you full? Are you going to get gas? Okay, all right. I'll bet. 
Well, we can share uh, fuel today if we need to. I've got, I'll have plenty. Uh, well, I won't have plenty. I need all of it, but you know, if, if you get in a tight spot, then I'll have extra. We'll just stop again. Yeah, dig it up on your phone. Look for uh, yeah, yeah, t breakfast place of any kind, food, whatever. I don't know. There's got to be somebody around. It's Sunday morning now, you know. Sleepy little towns. Yeah, you would think. But we're in Rome, man. When in Rome. I just, I just noticed. I never saw it before, but on my uh, my slide that I had uh, in March or whatever, when that guy pulled out in front of me, uh, I ground off my fork lower down here. I never noticed that. I never noticed it. Uh, yeah, about ten miles an hour. Yeah, about ten miles an hour, I think. Uh huh. It, it wasn't nashy. Yeah, exactly. Didn't even notice that. Well, I guess we're, uh, I guess we're hunting. Open oh, gravy boat. I wonder what they have. No, it'd be better to just get something to roll. I mean, we're a little leisurely today, but I don't think we should uh, have an hour sit down, sit down, eat. You know. Come on, pop. Come on, Pop. Did it just cancel out on me, you son of a bitch? Replace nozzle? What the hell? It canceled out on me, you son of a bitch. Take ten seconds too long figuring out what you're doing and it turns off. Alright. Fuck with me. Well, then uh, we can go back to the hotel, get our photo, and get on the road, start on the route, and, you know, just stop somewhere along the way. It's not a big deal. As long as we're not doing it. Yeah. If we're not doing a sit-down breakfast, uh, you know, a couple of minutes extra on the time is no big deal. Cap this up, and I'm ready to go.
too then. Strap this guy in here and we are ready to roll. gloves off until I take the picture because I just have to take them off anyway. Okay, well, let this day begin. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Got to go back and get the picture and then figure out which direction we're going. Yep, clear on this side. All right. The morning air feels pretty good. It's just chilly enough to uh, give that air conditioning effect. Yeah, it's gonna get hot as balls. Might get a little cooler as we get out toward the coast, though. I haven't been to South Carolina in a long time, so I really don't remember how the weather is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what his story was. He sent a weird text message yesterday saying, uh, send the truck, I fucked up my knee. Uh, I was like, what? And I didn't see it until I got here, uh, so I don't know what the, uh, what the story was. Really? I'm going to turn around right here. Just make it easier. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't really read that whole situation with him. It's a little bit off. Put my route up so I'm already ready to go. Go to apps, go to trip planner, go to save trips, day eight, track. Okay, go, yes, oh, go. And start, okay. So picture time. Oh yeah, probably just came. I'm not gonna worry about that until we check our helmets up. Yeah, yeah. That'll be uh contortion isn't the track. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be any fun. Yeah, yeah. Sell tickets sell tickets for that. <laughs> I'm being flagged. Come here, George. Oh, George. I thought she was calling us. Some of the support, uh, personal support vehicles for the uh, riders there. Okay, you ready to hit it? Let's do it. Start knocking down miles. But at a uh, somewhat relaxed pace to save our belts and tires and everything else. 
uh, ready to navigate, and I don't know which way we're supposed to go. Uh, looks like we come out of here and go right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The the chevrons. I'm looking at the little chevrons on there. They should indicate direction of travel. Uh, I noticed last year, or you know, 21, uh, the uh, the trick tracks lines. Several of the turns we were making, the chevrons were going the other direction, and I was confused. I was like, wait, that doesn't look right. So apparently there was a little bug in the uh, directional routing on the uh, trick track stuff, and he fixed that. Uh, but I knew that I wasn't crazy. I was looking at it going, I think we're going the wrong way, guys. But then I'd zoom the map out and look where the next checkpoint was. It's like, no, it has to be the right way. I don't know why the arrows are facing the other direction. So uh, we're still not going the right way. So we were supposed to go out of the hotel the other direction. Yeah, well, oh, we could have turned there. We'll turn up here. We'll get back on the track. And it's not routing me. It's supposed to be routing me. Here, I'm just going to pull off of this little side street here. We'll fix it. Oh, big rough bumps. What is this? It's just a driveway. That's fine. It'll give us somewhere to sit for a second. Why is it not routing me? Route me, man. Route me. Yeah, the, the track went down. So, trip planner. Save trips. I know I said go, and I said go a couple times. I really mean go. I really want you to go. I want you to go. I said go. I said yes. Calculating the route. 99. And start. It's not routing. Ah, make a U-turn. Okay, so we go back the other way and we'll hit one of these other streets over here. You got it? Okay, now it's routing. It's it's like it's very sleepy this morning. I don't know what the problem is. Okay, we go toward Atlanta. Uh, doing a mile. 1.7 turning on US 27 up here. turn left here and get back on the main track uh, or follow Garmin. I say we go on the main track and then uh, any other optional routing we'll figure out because it was uh, sending me on goose chases the other day and I didn't appreciate it much. Yeah, it's got us bypassing all kinds of stuff so let's go left. Yeah, we'll get, oh, big ass speed bumps. Uh, we'll get over here to the main track. See, so, yeah, it's the routing is all effed up. Get it out on the road; it'll correct. Oh, another one. Yeah, we should just go straight ahead, and we're going to run right into the track. can't avoid these speed bumps like you can most because they go full width <laughs> you can't can't go between them or around them on the curb Ooh, that sun is bright what's that well we'll go back you want to get something oh yeah I got it online I think Yeah. Exactly. Right. As soon as you turn it off, then you miss something. Yeah, that's how it goes. And they take so long to turn on and actually start recording. There's like a five second lag sometimes. Uh huh. Yes, it does. You got to unplug it. Yep. Okay. There you go. We could have gotten fuel here. 
didn't even know. Well, they're always uh, always open with coffee, so get your get your caffeine fix. Just pull up. Uh, let's just pull up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Get your coffee. We'll just do that and uh, screw time today. Oh, like a long Colt 45? Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's a, uh, what's called a uh, Richard's Mason, Mason conversion. So, when black powder started to transition, uh, you lead, you go. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How much do you, uh, have to spend on reloading as far as cost per round what does it work out to that's true are you casting your own bullets or are you using uh, pre-mates pre-cast okay Yes, left. God damn, these brakes. The brakes on this bike, I need to upgrade. They are so, I've really got to mash the levers to haul this thing down. Yeah, uh, I was going to upgrade the pads and the rotor on this thing uh, before I left and I just ran out of time. I've got some EB, the pads will help a lot. If you get some EBC double H, they help. Uh, these factory pads are just wooden blocks. They don't have much feel and they don't... And once they bite, you can squeeze the lever until you break it off. And you're not getting any more uh, braking power out of it. Yeah, yeah. I hope you started braking early or you're going to be Flintstoning, Jack. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. I've had that same issue. Yeah. Well, and that's why I was getting so pissed off with the, those downhill twisties coming out of uh, Tennessee and Alabama yesterday. Nothing's marked. There's no signage. There's no warnings, nothing. And it's all downhill off camber. And I'm in the binders as hard as I can. And the bike is just not slowing down fast enough. And I have to stand, stand up and go wide in the corner because if I brake any harder while cornering, I'm afraid I'm going to lock the wheel, you know. It's like, fuck overshooting these corners left and right I was getting pissed off and I wasn't going fast I just I couldn't see the corners you know suddenly the pavement's there and then suddenly it's not it's done a 180 and it's below you at a weird angle fuck yeah they're not, it's not big yeah I think it's 230 millimeter drum or something it's not very big It's the front, yeah, so you got to brake early. Yeah, and same with this one. you got to brake early and get all that braking done before you set a line, and then you can trail brake on the rear if you need to, but uh, you got to unload that front tire. Yeah, unload that front tire before you hit the corner because if you got more braking to do, you're going to get fucked real fast. Yeah, so back to the shooting stuff. Uh, I was a competitive shooter for a long time. Uh, I was averaging uh, around 3,000 rounds a week. And uh, I, what's that? Uh, nine, yeah, yeah, nine and, nine and 45, yeah. 
Uh, and a lot of 22, we, um, uh, untold thousands of 22 rounds uh, that I would just plink for the hell of it. Uh, but I would spend a lot of time at that uh, law enforcement range. It was H&H &H in Oklahoma City. Uh, and you know, I'd just go in there and burn a few thousand rounds. And usually late at night, we would close off half of the range and we would do uh, competitive shooting stuff, you know, time shoots and uh, dot shooting and bowling pin shooting and stuff like that. But you can't do that when the range is full of, you know, regular civilian customers, you know. But I got into reloading and uh, the, I want to say nine, I was able to reload and shoot for about three and a half cents a shot and 45, I was doing uh, about five and a half cents a shot. But that was back when everything was cheap, you know, primers were cheap, powder was cheap, bullets were cheap. And if you bought them in bulk uh, and you were reusing your brass, it wasn't bad. If you had to buy all new brass, then yeah, it would jump up a couple of pennies, but you can reuse that brass usually three, maybe four times before the case gets too thin that you end up with uh, tolerance problems or splits or whatever. But uh, yeah, that was back when it was cheap and I was making enough money that I didn't care about dropping two or $300 a week in ammo. Shit, now two or $300 in ammo, that's just a couple boxes. <laughs> Yep, good fun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I had a... a these fucking... Yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, well, just go straight when you're in the braking. Yeah, this is the turn. Fuck, I missed it too. Um... I had a, a progressive press auto loader so I could drop all of my uh, bullets in the hopper, powder in the hopper, you know, primers, everything. So multi-stage press and uh, I had the the foot button on it, you know, with uh, the motor so it would basically do all the work. It was manual where you had to, you know, press the foot switch to get it going and hold it. That way if, if you had a problem you could just let off and it wouldn't just sit there and spin out bad cases or whatever but it was an expensive uh rig but it well it it i'm sorry it was a lee lee progressive yeah 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 i had a lee and uh, all the dies for resizing and auto trimming and all that kind of stuff it was a it was a nice setup i paid uh, it was a couple grand for the rig yeah yeah, and I'm I'm not a machinist, so you know it was interesting to me to learn all the the settings for calibrating and yeah, uh, and we got a left coming up here it looks like, uh, but it was neat to get into all the precision stuff and you know case, case trimming and uh, setting you know tolerances and everything. It's a neat system. Right. Yeah, I did a lot of silhouette shooting. 308 and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yeah, yeah. The the old retro stuff is uh, more entertaining, I think. It's got more personality. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. I want a good lever gun. I haven't had one in a while. Shit, we're going to be stuck behind this guy forever. Dude, you got one? Oh, man. I, uh, my buddy that I grew up with shooting and hunting had uh, a little browning, uh, I can't remember, if, no, it was a, it was a pump, it was a browning pump, and it, just like a lever, you know, but it was a pump action instead of the lever action, if I recall, I'm trying to remember now, damn, anyway, it was, it was a, it was a browning, and it was a top ejecting, you know, like it had a, a plate that opened on the top every time you would cycle the, 
the action on it and it would eat any kind of 22 round so you could mix anything you wanted in there uh, 22 long shorts long rifle anything yeah you could shoot rat shot rat shot out of it anything you wanted to shoot it would take it and you could mix them in the tube it was the most fun gun i ever shot and he gave it to me uh I can't remember he was moving or something he's like hey you want this old gun it's like yeah sure man and uh, I had it for a short time and it got stolen with some other stuff I was so pissed got st stolen out of a storage unit and I've always wanted to get one since then and if you can find them now they're they'll set you back 1500 bucks Gotcha. Uh huh. Right, 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 right. That's cool. Right. Yeah. Yep. I love those those older long barrel twenty twos. I like modern ones like the Ruger ten twenty two and stuff like that, but. I, I just I I like I like the lever actions. There's just some appeal to that. I, I don't know. It's the mechanical simplicity and elegance of it all that's so cool. We're off. Yeah, I just noticed we're off. We're see we're fucking talking. We are fucking up the route so bad today. Oh my god. We've made so many loops. We've made so many fucking turnarounds. I'm not paying attention either. Right as you said that, I was looking down. I was like, where the hell is the line? Oh, yeah, I spun the tire. <laughs> they do, and the little turns and changes, uh, they don't look obvious at all. <coughs> That's all right. We're having fun. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how fucking far away. Where did we turn off? Where did we miss? Well, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a connect. How do we? Yeah, well, we just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. We'll just come up here and turn right. It's about another half mile up. That's all right. Yeah, we're having fun. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck points. We'll get there eventually. We had a, a breakfast intermission anyway, so our checkpoint time for this one's gonna suck. It doesn't matter. Yeah, coming up here on the right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, the people give me flack uh, for my daily carry, uh, and it's a uh, Taurus. Uh, millennium PT 45 or PT 145 Millennium Pro. It is a striker fired pistol with a restrike. So that's the reason I chose it. Uh, it's a compact 45. It holds, you know, 10 plus one. And I'm a small guy. It's a small frame gun. It fits me very well. It doesn't, you know, the, the hilt doesn't stick out very far uh, in clothing and stuff like that. So it, it kicks like a fucking mule you know i shoot 230 grain flying ash cans out of it and uh, if if i have to hit somebody those spear gold dots are going to make a really bad fucking day for them uh but i've got probably 10,000 rounds on that frame and i've never ever had a single fail to feed or fail to eject on it i've had a few fail to fire because of bad primer but that gun is just absolutely accurate and it never fails. I just, I love it. And it was a cheap gun. You know, I paid like, I don't know, 379 for it or something like that. It's just a great rig. Yeah, no shit. Great rig. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, the lightweight, sure, sure. Well, have you looked at the, the Canic and some of those? Right. I can't remember. Uh, I like the M&P, the Smith M&Ps, but they're not necessarily small. Yeah, they're not necessarily small. They're good weapons. Uh, your right signal is on, by the way. Yeah, you got it. Um, the Canic TP9 or something like that. It's a. Uh, it's almost a knockoff of the uh, the Springfield XDs, kind of along those lines, but a little more slim. Uh, I like the look and the feel of it. I haven't fired one, uh, but I might add one of those to the safe at home. I don't know if I'd use it as a carry gun, but... Yep, the CZs are good. Yep. Yeah, 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 heavy. Yeah. <laughs> They're... They're chunky. They're they're chunky heavy bitches, man. That's like a three pound gun. Yeah. <coughs> Holy fuck! This is like a thirty percent grade here, man. I'm full throttle and I am dropping speed. What the fuck? That's a thirty percent grade, there, kids. Holy fuck! <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Anywho, yeah, I uh, I have a, a Smith and Wesson uh, uh, M and P full size, you know, nine mil, and I carry that sometimes. But it's just a little bit big uh, as far as the the hilt length on it for comfortable carry. I really really prefer my uh, uh, Taurus. It's just a great gun, Millennium Pro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Python, yeah, that is a Python uh, replica, I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, they just, they had a bad reputation for a while here in the States with their quality control, and I did have a problem with uh, one of them that I had. Uh, I've had two of those uh, Millennium 45s. Uh, one of them was the double action, single action, and I thought I would like that, but I, I don't know, something about the trigger feel on it I just didn't care for. It didn't have a good break, and uh, it had it. Uh, no, no, it looks, uh, it's a more modern, you know, uh, almost a shaved down 1911 style. They look kind of like a SIG, but uh, the, uh, that DASA that I had, uh, the slide catch on it was defective and it would munch your fingers when you were messing with the gun and it was on a uh, slide lock. So I sent it in to them. Uh, it also had a problem with the, uh, uh, the pins in the, uh, frame, the receiver, uh, where it was, yep. Oh fuck. I got to stand up. Whoa. Yeah. I was locking the front wheel right there. Um, I had problems with the, uh, pins for the aluminum rails working themselves out of the uh, polymer frame. So anyway, I sent it back to them. They fixed it. They, you know, they, they resolved all the issues. God damn, these corners and I are not getting along today. My tire is squirming. I think my front tire is low. Every time I get on the... Br huh? Yeah, uh, every time I hit the brakes, the front tire is squirming underneath me like I'm on tar strips. Anyway, <laughs> so I... Uh, I sold that one and I got that single action with restrike and I've, I've had really good luck with it. But they're the official supplier of all the police and the military and everything down in uh, Brazil. So, you know, they're, they're a big enough manufacturer. Yeah, my front tire is squishing. What the fuck is going on here? I just went over the double yellow stripe and it squished on me. I need to check my tire pressures later today just don't have front end feel. It gets all squirrely on me. Yeah, over the top, kind of northeast side. Yeah, 
I've been to Atlanta a few times and it's hot. It's busy. I don't like it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, she was a hottie. Cool. Right, right. You can't get back on. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like East St. Louis. Right. Yeah, I've had that and uh, the, the craziest one because it's kind of where my family comes from, uh, Wichita, Kansas. I was up there you know, 10 years or so ago uh, and I was up there for a funeral. My, uh, my cousin died, that's another story, but uh, I made a wrong turn and I was over toward, I think it was the either the southeast side or northeast side of uh, Wichita and I got off the highway to find a different way to turn around and man, I was in the hood, let me tell you. Uh, there were guys walking down the street with uh, pistols in their hands, just open. I mean, screw tucked into their waistband. They're walking around with them in their hands. I'm like, oh shit, what did I just walk into here? This is a war zone. Well, they're probably not fucking up their routing as bad as we are. <laughs> they probably made no wrong turns. We've already made at least half a dozen. At least we caught them before we got too far out of shape. Normally I've got the uh, the Google Maps or my uh, Garmin talking to me over my headset, but I didn't turn that on today. So if I'm not looking, at least it tells me, you know, turn left, turn right. Make a U-turn, idiot. I still want to do my vintage ride uh, on my old... Uh, I got two old Hondas. I got a 1970 CL175 Scrambler, uh, and then the other one is a 1978 Honda CB125. Uh, and one, one of those, uh, probably the 175, I want to do a uh, Continental 48. Uh, there's a mathematically optimized route that you can take, and you can hit all 48 states, and I want to say it's a little over 4,000 miles or maybe just a little over 6,000 miles. There's two different options you can take, uh, but I want to do that. You know, taking as many back roads as possible, not the highways. And uh, you can hit all 48 in as little as like 4,000 miles and change. It's a, it's a mathematically optimized route. It started out as a, a test by all these math geeks and uh, map nerds. And they're saying, okay, how many... How many cities could you hit, or how many states could you hit in 24 hours? So they were looking at all the different states and the options. Uh, which states could you go through and hit the most number in the least miles? And they came up with like, I don't know, 17 states or something like that. Uh, and, and that's, you know, normal speed limit and, you know, highway routes. And then it evolved into, okay, so 
what would be the shortest path you could take to visit all 48 states. And I don't know if they were saying just like the corners of each state or if it was to the capitals of each state. But they came up with this route and now it's known as the, you know, the lower 48 tour. So, yeah, I'd love to do that. Take about three weeks doing that, just rolling. But when I do it, if I'm on the vintage bike, I'm going to go paper map. I'm going to go old school. I'm not going to use a GPS. So that means I've got to have maps of everything and roll charts and turn by turn already kind of printed out, ready to go. And uh, I want to I want to do the challenge. You know, no technology except in emergencies. So if I need to make a phone call or whatever, I'll use my phone. I'll take the cameras on the bike, you know, to record the trip. But I'm not going to be using GPS. Yeah, it would be because everyone's so lazy now using GPS instead of reading a map and keeping three or four turns and highway numbers in their heads for, you know, okay, I need to look for this junction and then turn. Uh, everyone's gotten complacent using the computer. <coughs> yep. Hey, just get a little tank bag with a clear pouch on the top and uh, make that your, uh, your uh, routing. Just have the, the turn by turn sitting there waiting for you. And remember, a what? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my dream bike when I was a teenager. Uh, I was, uh, I'm a 1970s kid, so in Oklahoma, you could get your uh, motorcycle permit at 14. And I was always in the motorcycle dealers, you know, just drooling over the bikes. I wanna get this, I wanna get that. Of course, I didn't have the money. Uh, but when I was 14, I had saved up enough money and uh, I went and bought a brand new 1984, yeah, 84 Honda XL125S, the Enduro bike. And the reason that I chose the Enduro bike is it was a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the CB125S, which was the road bike. And I, I lived, you know, rural in Edmond, and it was dirt roads, and we did a lot of off-road exploring, so the Enduro made sense. And I love that bike. I love the XL, but I always wanted the CB125, and then they stopped selling them, and, you know, I got older, and, you know, I was going for bigger, better, faster bikes and all that, but I always wanted one. So I found this one uh, at a garage sale in Houston. Somebody brought it in from Alabama, I think, and... Uh, it was a kind of a, a shed basket case. You know, they had left it sitting in a shed for a long time. The wheels were rusted out a little bit. It doesn't run and all that, but cosmetically the bike is all complete and it was fine except for just a little hole in the left side uh, battery air box cover area. The plastic is broken. So I just need to find a side panel for it. And the tank is rusted up and perforated in a couple of spots. So I got to put a different tank on it. But other than that, it's ready for me to restore. I just haven't had time. So I'm going to try to make that a focus over the next few months, uh, tear into that project and start doing the restoration on it. I want to put it on the road. Yeah, pretty much. It's the vertical almost, yeah, almost perfectly upright. Uh, yeah. And the crazy thing is those things made a lot of horsepower for the day. Uh, they're like 14 and a half horsepower, so they put out as much as these things do, and they're air-cooled. There's your trail. So, that bike spins to like 10,000 RPM or something like that, and uh, I, I want to say I want to say it makes uh, 14 and a half horsepower. So they were good for 65, 70 miles an hour, even back in the day. So that's impressive. low compression yeah it all comes down to the compression yeah yeah and you got to think that horizontal engine uh, in the Cubs and 
and everything. It's an old tried and true design. They've just been refining it and adding a little bit of displacement to it over time. But they still run it very detuned for reliability. And that's why these things are legendary for, you know, taking tons of abuse and never dying. Uh, It's making a lot more power. Yeah, I, I haven't, I don't remember what the compression on it is, but the original, uh, like my cub, the 2019 C125, it had a low compression. I want to say 9.3 to 1, which is pretty paltry, but that lets it run reliably on lower octane fuels and it's de-stressed. The new cub and Grom engine uh, is 10. Point two to one, 10.3 to one or something like that. So they really bumped up the compression ratio and that's why it's making more power. A little bit more, not a lot more, but a little more. And it's still a two valve head. So you're not cramming lots and lots of air in there with a real aggressive cam profile. So you could get more out of that power plant with higher compression or with uh, a four valve head, but then you're also increasing the operating stresses and the heat and everything else. And that can affect reliability. And obviously, it makes it consume more fuel. Straight, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I don't see a connect on my map, so we got to go straighten around. So, yeah, the... Uh, that old uh, CB125 should be a fun project. I really want to get that thing on the road. It's been sit... Yeah. That'd be so cool. Touring the lower 48 on a 125. Uh, no, we're going. We're going. <coughs> well, it depends on uh, road speed and all that and conditions, but I think it could be done in like two and a half or three weeks relaxed pace you know not rushing because uh, you got to think you're going to be on it's a small bike so you're going to be on back roads going you know 45 50 average speeds kind of thing yeah I'd like to do that just for me, but I think it would be a great video series as well. Uh, showing, you know, life on the road on a little bike, you know, touring the entire country, that would be interesting. Uh, I'd probably try to open up a GoFundMe or some kind of a donations link to finance that trip because it would be long and slow and you know, I can't really afford to be out of work for more than a couple weeks at a time or things get tight. Could be. Take a bunch of spare belts and uh, a couple of rear tires and enough enough camping gear on the back. He hates it. Yeah, he he does not like the Navi. He thinks it's a piece of shit. Yep. Yeah, there you go. You don't have to worry about it puking its oil on the front disc because there's no disc and there's no oil. <laughs> it's so simple. Who gives a fuck if it breaks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, uh, no, and the people in India beat the shit out of them, though, and they say that they're very reliable. And down in Mexico, uh, they've got a great reputation for being reliable little mules. So I don't know. I was gonna do I was gonna do the Navi for the Cannonball, but I know that the Cannonball goes on fast highways, and that's the problem. You know, it just doesn't have the the balls for that. So.
Yeah, it's sketchy. Yep, yep, yep. We... Right. Well, and that's why I put those warning lights on the back of the bikes and even on this one. Because I know I'm going to be one of the slowest things out there on the road and I need to give traffic every opportunity to see me. And unless they're being complete douchebags, they should be able to slow down or give me enough room to get by something. Oh, it's fine. Uh, it's not really comfortable above 65, but it can pull 75. Uh, I've actually gotten it up to uh, 82 under flat road conditions, so it, it can run. Yeah, but it it's a, a low horsepower bike. It's only, I don't remember what it is, like 17 horsepower or something like that. It's not very potent at all. It's torquey, but you know, but not much power up top. It's comfortable cruising speed on the highway is about 60. 50, yeah, 55, 60. Yeah. They're little tractors. Yeah, it's like a tractor. It's great. It's kind of like a T-Dub, but a little bit more powerful than a T-W. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, they're fairly rare bikes. Yeah, they're really rare bikes. You don't find a lot of them out there. And uh, I, I just don't think they've sold all that well. So the dealers don't have big order allocations for them and stuff like that. They're kind of a niche bike because they're not great on the highway. I'll tell you that. They, 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 yeah, they run out of guts about uh, 50 miles an hour. So they're very compatible or comparable rather with the, uh, the Trail 125 in that aspect. But they do have more torque and they've got better gearing for off-road stuff than the current Trail 125. Yeah, she's still in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's still in. I passed her yesterday. Yeah. She's just slow roading. I think so. I haven't really decided. Uh, when I first saw the announcement of them and you know the price point, I was like, shit, that's great. But by the time you get dealer fees and taxes on there, it's going to be a lot more expensive. You know, add six or eight hundred bucks. And I'm a little underwhelmed about the specs on it. And I, you know, it's not the bike's fault. It just it is what it is. If you look at the power and the weight, it weighs as much as my XT, and my XT has got more everything. So it's kind of a problem there in its weight. Uh, you know, seat height is actually a little bit taller uh, than the uh, XT. Fuel capacity is about the same. I think it's got a little bit larger fuel tank on it. Uh, but it's not, it's not all that, yeah, it's not all that powerful and it's heavy. It's like 292 pounds. That's heavy, man, for, for a dirt bike. No, it's not much lighter at all. And my XT is already all that. So I think what I might do is I'll get one uh, and I'll do a big comparison because I've also got uh, the little uh, XR 125, uh, the, or 150 rather. No, no, sorry. CRF, I'm trying to think of my terms here. CRF 150F. So I've got the dirt bike uh, CRF Honda 150. So, I yeah, I bought it for my son. I've I've ridden a few times. I don't think I've ever shown it on video. Uh, but I was, I was just having the thought the other day. It's like, why the hell don't I ride this thing? And, it, you know, I just relegated it to be my son's bike, and I've never fucked with it. I fixed it for him a couple times, but I've never really ridden it that much. Uh, but it's set up for dirt, you know, it's got a, a big sprocket on the back, like a 54 tooth sprocket or something like that. So it tops out at, you know, maybe 50 miles an hour, best case. But it's a dirt bike, it's not made for, you know, running the streets. Anyway, what I wanted to do... It, huh? I was going to say, what I wanted to do is get that uh, XR150 and compare it against my XT250 and 
another Honda 150, which is the CRF 150, and just kind of see how they do in mixed trails and you know light duty stuff. I, I won't really do a road test with the the CRF because it's not street legal and it's got knobbies on it, so that's not really a fair test. But I want to see how they stack up. I think. I think so. It's pretty much the same. That that 150 power plant has been around forever, and uh, I think it's the same engine. Pretty close, anyway. Yeah, it's a great little trail bike. Oh yeah, it's light, man. It might be, it might be tipping the scales barely at 200 pounds. So it's a true dirt bike. You know, you can pick it up and <laughs> move it around, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's gonna come in drastically lighter than the uh, the XR. Yeah, yeah, he bought one. Yeah, he bought one. Yeah, I was thinking that I would be one of the first ones to get it, uh, and I was planning on getting a pre-allocation and you know uh, putting the money down on it but I've been so busy and money's been a little bit tight so I was like eh let everybody else rush to that and I'll get to it and I'll just do some different comparison videos uh, some stuff that uh, won't be like first ride videos because there's plenty of the first ride stuff and now this guy's gonna haul ass and block us from passing him dickhead going intentionally overly slow and then we try to get around him and he won't let us go by. full-size machine uh, I sat on one at a dealer the other day right before I left for the cannonball and uh, it was a black one I want a white one I don't I don't like the black all that much I think the white looks better on that bike so I'll wait for a white one to be available and I'll probably snag one ideally go ahead no, I was gonna say ideally what I want to do is I want to trade the Riker off and that I should net 8,000 bucks 8,500 out of that I think uh, so I'll get the uh, the XR150 and also the uh, ADV160. So, it'll be a two for one trade. No, you can always sell this one. They sell, uh, they don't last long on Marketplace and stuff like that. Ooh. Looks like we have a right turn here. And a bike club. Really? Well, they uh, they got that allocation done early uh, because. Uh, they're coming up from Mexico, same as the Navi. This bike is available in Mexico, has been for a long time. But the shitty thing is, they get the newer version down there that's fuel injected. I want to say it's the one, 190 or something like that, XR190, and it's fuel injected. And I think they even have a fuel injected version of this 150. I could be wrong. But we're getting this, yeah, we're getting this cheap carbureted shit, which I do not understand with modern emission requirements and all that. Why the hell are we getting the carbureted leftovers when our EPA is so, you know, up our ass about everything? I don't get it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So anyway, whatever. I'm just glad that they're bringing some of the small stuff here. Because they've had great bikes down in South America and even as close as Mexico for decades, and we just don't get them. I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Yeah, this front tire is not feeling right. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, it reminds me of the early 80s, you know, when uh, there were still small bore bikes available in the U.S. market. Once the mid 80s, uh, getting toward like late 80s, early 90s, all the small bore options disappeared because they weren't selling and none of the manufacturers wanted to bring that stuff here anymore. So it all dried up. You know, there were no more 125s and 150 street bikes and, you know, Enduros and all that. Nope, they're gone. So it's great to, uh, to have them available again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this front tire. Fuck, this thing's driving me nuts. Every time I try to set a line, the front end just washes and wiggles. So I have to stand up and scrub speed. You still have your signal on, by the way. Yep. Bigger, faster equals better. Exactly, yeah. Good luck. Thing weighs four times what you do. Good luck with that. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, that's it. Yep. Right. Yeah, and the reality of that is, and I've discussed it, and I took a lot of flames for it in the videos uh, and comments that I uh, made on other people's videos. I took flames over there. The truth of most quote-unquote ADV bikes these days is that they're road queens, and that goes for all flavors of them, whether it's the Triumphs or the KTMs or the uh, BMWs. It doesn't matter. People buy them because they've got that allure of off-roading, only about 5% of the guys that buy those things ever take them off-road and really use them for off-road chores. No shit, they're road queens, man. So if those guys ever really got out and did off-road with them, you do some deep wood stuff, do some single track, you're going to realize real fast those bikes are heavy and they're pigs when they're off-road. And they go, yeah, but you know, we've seen people do cross-country tours on it, so you don't know what you're talking about. No, I do know what I'm talking about. I've fucking done it, and I tell you, they suck to pick up in the dirt. Let me tell you, I've done it multiple times a day, and that shit's no fun. And those <laughs> those videos that people watch, you know, like, yeah, they do. They cross the world with them. Right. They've got a production crew. They've got support trucks. They've got spare parts. They've got all kinds of stuff, because every time they break them, or every time they dump them they break shit so you know, get a light bike get a small bike you can dro drop a small bike many many times before you're going to break something because it's not as heavy metal is not going to give up and snap yeah yeah now they're the 1250s yeah it's a big machine man I would love to have one, but I would use it for road touring, which is what most people do. Uh, but then I have that argument with myself, why get an off-road bike to use it for on-road touring? Just get the on-road touring version, you know, the sporty one, uh, and add the panniers and, you know, the stuff that you want to it. So, yeah, straight. This guy's going exactly where we are, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 
they're expensive as shit to fix I'll tell you that and more and more more and more they're turning those things into black boxes you can't work on them as you know an owner you have to have them serviced because it's all electronic they got everything locked down for euro 5 compliance and all that nonsense so you can't really do your own work on them you can change tires you can change brake pads uh, but if it gets into anything with the engine or the rest of the drive line you've almost always got to have it serviced at a dealer and that's expensive man oh yeah yeah and if you have the dealer do it get bent over and shafted And getting tires on the things is expensive too. You just need to put new rear shoes on it and you're looking at 1200 bucks or something. Right. Right, right. Hey, just so you know, I'm hanging back in the corners. I'm not gonna run these corners hard and fast until I check my tires because my front tire is definitely uh, squishy today so i've overcooked a couple corners already this morning and i'm just gonna hold back you have fun uh, don't worry about holding back for me and every time i've had to get in these front brakes hard the front wheel is squirming all over the place like i'm on tar snakes so i'm sure i'm low pressure i don't know why i'm low hopefully i didn't take a hit I've got ride on in these tires so when I do have a puncture it reseals it but I lose pressure when that happens and that might be what's happened here it feels okay in a straight line but it's uh, definitely low So hopefully this fall, I can get back into doing some uh, adventure moto camping, which is what I really like. And that's what I grew up doing. And I haven't done much of that on the channel because I've been doing all these road tours and stuff. But uh, what I like doing is packing up the XT with uh, you know enough camping gear to go live out boondocking off grid for three or four days. You know, I'll go out into one of the forests and get way out in the middle of nowhere and just live out there you know take solar panels for my power and uh cook out there you know everything just kind of disappear from society for a while shit i might That'd be cool. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're gonna let him route it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And where is he again? Montana. Oh, he's way the fuck up there. Okay. Sure. 
sure. Right, right. Right. There you go. But you're looking for BDR stuff like back road and off road. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I haven't ever used them for BDR, but I bought the maps, uh, Butler's BDR maps. I don't know if you've seen those. Uh, the Butler maps are really good, and their paper, you can use some of the electronic planning tools that they have, but uh, those BDR routes are pretty, pretty nice, and you can modify them to your tailor, you know, whatever you want to do as far as your... Uh, your route preferences and where you want to visit and all that but it gives you kind of grades of the roads for the best you know hand-picked routes that everybody uh, likes the most uh, for trails and they're rated for difficulty and all that kind of stuff so pretty cool yeah yeah Yeah. I oh we're coming up on a checkpoint here. Yep, that's right. And figuring out how to route yourself in and out of there and not get lost. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, man. That's I do the same thing. Yep. Okay, you're you're about wait, you're about on top of it. Check for the dot. Is it a gas station right here? Hey, there's Scoots. All right. Barrettsville Food Store. All right, right here is this picture. Then you'll just have to pee. About two. Right behind us, yeah. Not a good distance, no. We just passed him maybe 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes. You know, Matt, my sense of timing, and I'm so tired. But, but definitely not a long way. Yeah. Bored kids. Okay. You're going the wrong way, man. Oh shit, I should check these tires. We're here. Let me just do that real quick. They're they're bugging me. Uh both of them feel low. I hope I don't have uh flats on these things. Let me get down off of this crown right here. Push it down. I'm going to check these tires because they just don't feel right. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. 
Maybe I'm, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Maybe I'm just heavy and uh, that's what I'm feeling, but I could swear that front tire feels so squishy. Uh, and it was really messing with me in the corners. <clears throat> It'll only take me a minute to get in here. I think I got low tires today, but this thing is all over the road in the corners. I got to check my tires. Take everything off to get under the seat, of course. Let's see what it says. Well, it feels okay. Pressure wise, I don't know what's up with this thing. Dead bug on here. 32. 31. I run these things normally at about uh, 32 cold, so this is hot. It is a couple pounds low. I'm going to give it a... I'm giving blowjobs. Uh-huh. I'll bet. Because you're not as engaged. You're just waiting. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. You're tracking everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the front was a couple pounds low at least. Let's check this one. Could just be altitude change, but I gotta, I gotta be careful about that. And I don't want to burn myself on this exhaust. 37, yeah, the back is still good. I usually run that one 36, 37. Sorry to give you a big deal. Yeah, front was low. I was not incorrect in my assessment. about three pounds, four pounds lower than I normally like it. Yeah, kind of Kinda? We're friggin' nuts. What are you talking about? We celebrate, drink a few beers, and go back home. We survived another one. Luckily, this is quick to get on and off. Quick-ish. <laughs> As he fumbles. That side is just getting so tight. I don't know if it's a strap or what. thing doesn't want to go through there. Okay, diagonal. Clicky. And uh, clicky. You good? Yeah. The front was uh, three or almost four pounds low from where I want it. No, thank you. I would, but I don't need the sugar. Ugh. I should ask him if he wants to carry this bag. <laughs> hey man, you need some extra cargo? I could use a brake. Be 
this would be you're missing your valve cap. Yeah, yeah, I lost it a long time ago. Yep, that's right. I don't mind being last. But I, I'm not getting points on this thing. I'm so far out of the running, I could care less. Somebody was telling me I was like fifth in my class or something like that last night. I can't remember what they said in the, the live stream. And I went, well, hell, that's not too bad. And he went, no, no, fifth from the bottom. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that's harsh, man. Harsh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that you were in an experimental class or something? I don't know. And, you, and it had you listed on a monkey? Oh, Grom. Okay. Gotcha. That's right. Burn him. No, I don't think so. I didn't see him. Yeah, I thought so too, but he took off ahead of us. Well, he. Yeah, front end feels so much better on this thing now. God, it was squishy, squishy going into the corners. It was like, man, I cannot hold the line to save my life here. And it might be my life if I'm not careful. What about the tire pressure? As uh, uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah, Blytheville, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we checked them and they were five pounds low in the rear, four in the front. And then today, now, why my front tire is four pounds lower than it should be, I don't know. Yeah, I should have checked mine before I left. I normally do that every, every two days or about every thousand feet of elevation that I change. But, you know, on a cannonball like this, hell, we're going up and down elevation like crazy. So... It really should be a daily pre-check. Get in a hurry. You, know, you remember to check your bags and all your straps and everything, but uh, checking the machine is just as important. Yep. Uh, we're back.
bank and right. Yep. Uh -oh. Ooh, go, go. Yeah, it's unfortunate that... Uh... Three, two, one. All right, everybody. Uh, resuming from the road. We got another uh, crew here that is... Uh caught up with us. Uh, we're running almost back at the top, almost tailed. Uh, <laughs> support truck is there and uh, we've been kind of keeping pace a little bit ahead of this uh, Vespa crew and uh, uh, it's like we got a force arrived there with that crew. I didn't remember seeing him. But anyway, we're running way late today. Uh, we know that we have zero chance for good point standings and all that and we really don't care. <laughs> so we're just having fun riding today, trying to keep ourselves awake and upright. Uh, I just slammed the five-hour energy, and Tyler just uh, chugged the Red Bull. We're trying to keep ourselves awake, because uh, after this many days of uh, long miles and sleep deprivation, we're, we're finding ourselves making a lot of routing errors today. <laughs> and he and I are shooting the shit on the palm, and we're talking and, uh, you know, just chatting along. And I've lost count now at how many misroutes and turnarounds we've done. It's been at least what 18 probably it's over a dozen <laughs> we are absolutely screwing up man <laughs> but we're catching it before we get too far off the track you know too far out of shape i think the longest backtrack we've had to do is about two miles maybe almost three miles <laughs> we look down and we're so far off It's not. It, it it really isn't. Now I think sliders. Uh, I, oops, uh, I think sliders in the Navi are, are going to be beneficial, and I'm going to play with that when I get back. Uh, but that's about it because it's a cheap part. It's a cheap upgrade. You know, Thirty bucks for a set of sliders. You know, to tune your acceleration.
shot went straight in. Uh, yeah, that's why I waited to do my maintenance uh, right before Canada the last day. Oh, one, one big bundle because when you pull the plastics off of this thing to do the valve, that's the type of thing. About the service manuals is they show you all of the tab locations, generally speaking, but they don't show you the direction of the tabs in the top. So they don't tell you.
thing that one of these has been in the bleak pool is what we're talking about here. We're dead center in the circle right now. What is it? Let's look at the. Let's look. I'm just standing on the road, so hopefully I don't get run over. What are we on? It's uh, Gurley's towing and auto service. This must be it right here. But what is the picture? Is there a, a sign out in the the grass? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the picture is obviously goofed, uh, or the GPS coordinate is goofed. Yeah, yeah, let's move up around the corner, because it's saying that we're dead center on it right now. They were using the mailbox address, obviously. Because that ain't where the sign is. How's it changed? Huh. Well, is there another girlies? towing or something? So they've changed the name. All right. It doesn't. Gurley's towing and auto service. I don't see that out here. At least not based on it. Well, whatever this is, it's a, it's a bonus point. I could give a shit. We'll take a picture and keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. This 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 isn't control. So, screw it. It's all bullshit anyway at this point. <laughs> I'm trying to not get run over by this traffic, but get it all in the picture. I want to get the sign and everything. Cool. Yeah. I think so too. Taking multiple angles of it so they can see that we're not full of shit. Something Commerce Road and Martin Griffith Road, you know, whatever. Well, maybe they used a really old picture. Who knows? With, yeah, yeah. And Google Maps may not have updated this because we are out in the sticks. All right. So. Uh, 
Well, strap them up, you too. Looks like it's kind of straight ahead. It's well, no shit. What do we got? Here? Highway 106. So this is Highway 106. I must be taking a slight right. A slight right. So this is the highway. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Well, no, shit. What is it doing? No, no. It, it looks like it's straight ahead for the official route. Why is Garmin doing this? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. You go that way. You just go straight. Oh, fuck, look at that one. Um, and they literally just popped up over that rise. Uh, my right bicep is killing me. I was holding that scooter last night for too long, and I strained my bicep holding that damn vest off. <laughs> and I'm not as beefy as uh as Hildo. Pacing the guns on that guy, man, he is really good dude. I don't know if he works out like an animal or if that's an
they lay into each other. They're just mean to each other, and it's funny because they dish it out and take it in equal portions. It's just fucking hilarious, man. They are ruthless. I think that's our problem. We're chatting, but we're having a good time. Who gives a shit? Yeah, there's so many of these little bends and splits everywhere out here on these roads that uh, if you're not on it, you miss. And then by the time you can correct, you get a line of fucking traffic. I'm gonna wait. You go. Okay, I'm rolling. I'm not dumping. Rolling. Whoa. I know, man. We could be like 50 miles further down the road, probably.
Did we? Yeah, well, we can get back on it with a... It looks like a left. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're off. Stair we're going away. We need to flip around. We're going the wrong way. U-turn. But we couldn't make a left there anyway. We had to come to this U-turn. Well, let me lead. I'll lead for a bit. I'll lead for a bit. <laughs> Fuck, I thought I was going to the coast. How did I get over here? I missed that left turn at Albuquerque. This is something to be fine. It's like a highway to be Yeah, we're back on track as a... I think we turn right here. The the I don't know if you can see my map. The overlay is all goofy. It shows another it shows another block, but I don't know. It doesn't look like there's another turn up here in a block. So we're coming right here. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not uh, matched up to a road. Uh, so we're gonna go down this way a little bit, and we'll jog left, right to get the track again. We're supposed to be one block further that way, but I don't see a one block further. That looks like a forest to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to go until the uh, uh, matches up and we cut over. There's nothing to hit here except the route, so we'll keep going. been our connect. Let's take this one. This says uh, one way. One way. Hey squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, shit, this is a rope. What the fuck is going on straight? This is uh, this is about as fast acting country shit as you can get here, man. Exactly. There were banjos in the distance and them boys disappeared. <laughs> oh, this is sketchy as hell. All right, I'm going. Ah! We're back on the track. <laughs> sure do have a pretty mouth.
I don't know yet. Gravel in a big goddamn hole that I hit. Can you get the bike off my leg? Thanks. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll help. Ah, fuck. It's sliding. Okay. Break. Oh. Yeah, once the momentum took over, that's all she wrote. All right, so a good down. Your head hit. I, I took a chin hit. It fucked the camera. Man, you hit hard. Yeah. It just disappeared. The front end went away. My leg is raspberried. Yeah, my leg is raspberried. So I'm trying to figure out what it... Yeah, you can see the slide right here. But I hit this gravel trying to avoid that hole. And the front end just it went away. It was totally gone. And I wasn't even in the front brake. I was in the rear. Yeah, my arm hurts like shit. I'm okay. I'm going to ride. Yeah, as long as the bike is rideable, I'm riding. You hit hard. I, so I hit hard. Yeah, I put my hands and my, uh, my chin up away. The fairing is 100% fucked. I don't even know if that's salvageable. That's good crash footage. Just if I wasn't filming. Were you? Yeah, I had all my cameras gone. Yeah. Well, so this is gone. I think the camera's still going. No audio adapter attached because it got yanked loose. Holy she's a well, that's why you always wear your gear. Always, always wear your gear. Well, I've gone down on the dirt plenty of times in my career, but not on scooters with zero tread, you know? You, you can't avoid it. That's why so many scooters have gone down in this shit, and that's why I was avoiding the gravel. Like, fuck, these things have got no traction. Yeah, it would... Come on. It was, it, well, you were there, but split second, you were up and then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just, it disappeared. There was nothing I could do at that point. I was slowing because I saw the shit, uh, but there's nothing I could do to avoid that, other than going 10 miles an hour, you know? My hand got cherried. Luckily, I had my gloves on. No, I didn't have this glove on, actually. Look at that. Because I was fucking with the phone earlier. How's your elbow? You, where'd you oh, land? Oh, I, I, I took a hit. Oh, yeah, I went, down, I went down on this side, and I was trying to get my chin out of it. So I know that my camera is probably... Yeah, the camera is what took the hit. Everything else is good on the helmet. Yeah, I didn't take a, a brain strike. It was just a, a whack, an upward hit. So I'll have to realign the camera. That's going to be interesting footage to look at later. That's Somebody's just turned off. Oh, okay. All right. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. My leg... My leg is uh, is hurting good already. I've got I lost a bunch of yeah I lost a bunch of skin on my knee. You can see my boot took some gravel underneath, uh, and my plastics are one hundred percent screwed. Doesn't look like yeah this got slide damage. Yep. So good thing I didn't put new plastics on before the cannonball, eh? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was unfortunate, but it'll still make it home. So now I gotta find my other strap here. I'm surprised you're all right. I've heard yeah. Well, you know, it, like I say, this is not my first rodeo. I've got lots of dirt experience, and uh, I was I was uh, anticipating this happening. That's why I avoided uh, gravel all day yesterday because this front tire just doesn't have any traction at all. It's terrible. Um, so now I gotta get this uh, this panel reset at least slightly. I don't even know if I can get it down there. Yeah. Like I say, I've been you know, riding all my life, and I've had a lot of dirt experience. I've been down more, more times on the dirt than I can count. But uh, trying to avoid it on the scooter. I don't even know how to get that on. That's what I can't figure out. Well, the tabs are obviously broken, but... Looks like it ought to just pop back in. Yeah, it just has to line up. Um, I'm stopping here. 
right in the middle. Maybe it's the breakers are tab bent. Yeah, uh, no, the tab is still good. The others are broken off. I don't know. I'll sort it out later. We'll get on the road. I'm baking, so I don't even want to look at my leg. I know I lost a whole bunch of skin under these jeans, but that would be the same problem even if you had riding you got pants zip on. Ties? I got some Fuck zip ties. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's roll. All right. Bye bye, Pretty Daytona good. Aero Visor. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop this recording and uh, reconnect my audio adapter. Okay, getting back on the road. Still runs. putting on the glove this time ow that hand is bruised up it hurts okay didn't break anything i know i lost a lot of skin under here i'm gonna have bloody jeans later today oh but i'm bending it and i'm going hey! uh mirrors are seriously wonkified but they'll work oh no that one got broken loose shit what do i do there oh i think that thing's busted Nah, i'll sort it i'll just do this with it i'll tighten it up later i need some channel locks or uh open end box end wrench combo it's tightening when I go that way so I can tighten it and then just bend this and hope for the best this guy just got vibrated out of position it's good to go I'm good when you're good I guess I need to recheck my load here oh my handlebars are really fucking crooked but I'll sort that hang on yeah yeah something's bent loose box is still tight i'm on that's good this is still tied in i need to tighten this strap now yeah handlebars are screwed but it'll be an interesting ride home for the next 1500 miles uh i'm straight if you want to torque the bars to where they're straight Now? Close. They're a little left. This is straight right there. That's good. Uh, I'll just I'll uh, I'll loosen the clamps later. Yeah. I don't think the bars are bent. I think the tree got twisted. Ah, fuck! My leg hurts. That's right. That's right. It's dirt. That's what happens on dirt. It's cool that multiple cameras were running, though. That's going to be fun footage. Yeah, yeah, catch me going down. The, I mean, it, it would have been... Yeah, I was going to say, every, uh, every time I've tried to capture stuff like that, I haven't had the right cameras running. This time it was running, and it would be interesting to see it from behind how quick the thing rotated. I mean, it literally just disappeared. It was instantaneous. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good enough. Well, PCX, she is seriously uh, wounded now. It'll make it home, though. I'm going to duct tape the shit out of it. You go. You go. I'm just going to take it easy. Yeah, handlebars are off by 15 degrees. So that means the front wheel needs to be realigned. Yeah, these tires, uh, just there's not enough width to it and there's no tread so it doesn't track for shit in the gravel it immediately twists sideways and if you're not going slow enough to correct it you're just gonna eat gravel like i did i've been down enough times that i know how to fall generally and i can once i feel it going and there's nothing i can do about it i go into self-preservation mode but that one was so quick and i ended up unable to get away from the bike it's just instant. Yeah, yeah. Once you know how to fall, uh, you can minimize your damage, your collateral damage. 
and I was at almost a recoverable speed, but once the front wheel folded, it was too late. You've got very little recovery time on these things because they're not light scooters. I mean, this is a 300 pound scooter. Uh, and once that front wheel is washing out, if you're Okay, resuming after uh, a pit stop here, uh, checkpoint, whatever this is. Uh, my leg is really hurting good. I'm carrying some souvenir gravel in the boot. Uh, and yeah, the bike has uh, definitely seen better days. <laughs> I'm gonna soldier on. I don't care. Ow! It hurts. Funny, my left hand hurts worse than my right, and the right one's the one that really went down. Uh, this... Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm glad that ain't for me. Uh, ah, the leg really hurts now. Okay. Huh, it didn't want to start. Uh, I guess it was vapor locked or something. Okay, so give me one second. Uh, three, two, one. Oh, wait. No, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this thing's a rattle trap now front end is just falling apart fucking it has I'm wondering if I'm gonna lose this panel I'm wondering if I'm gonna lose this panel this fairing panel because it is really coming loose now I don't know it'll stay I'll get it duct taped up I need to kind of get the tabs refit to each other tonight uh, hopefully if they hang on that long and uh, duct tape the hell out of it gorilla tape it I don't even know if my main camera is pointing the right direction anymore. Yeah, so if it's all right with you, I'm gonna ride uh, fairly slow for the rest of the event. Uh, probably you know, 55 max until I at least get this thing put back together because I'm worried that uh, high speed, air pressure, all that might make the fairings just explode in a dazzling array of white plastic everywhere. Uh, I think we can wait. We'll get it done. We're not that far from the end, I don't think. We're over halfway through. I need to... I think so. We're going to... Yeah, no, I think so. I'm going to pull up the track again. Uh, going slow here. Yeah. Try not, yeah, don't go too fast because I'm uh, working in the background here. Ah, oh, shit, I got people coming up behind. All right. I'll put on the trip planner. Save trips. Day 8 track. Come on. I can't go too slow for these guys. Or I'm just going to let them go by me, I think. Go. We'll find a spot where we can gently get to the side and let them go by. Because they're going to be running faster than us now by far faster than me anyway oh I have I have sand in my teeth that's no, alright I have sand in my teeth I didn't realize that until now crunch crunch We've got, uh, well, at the pace we're running, it says arrive in four hours and 34 minutes. I'm going to look at how many miles we have. Uh, arrival time is 5.49 p.m. Uh, I don't know what time it is now. I can change it again in a minute. Try again. Time to destination. No, four hours, four and a half hours. Jam. Okay, so let me look at uh, how many miles left. Distance to destination is 2:30. So no, I thought we had done half of it, but we've uh, we've only done 120 some odd miles. That's not right. There's no way. 
I've got 189, 180.9 on my trip, 181. And we had a 400 mile day. Yeah, I guess that math works out. So 220 miles, all right. Yeah, about a third, a little over a third. No, it's not encouraging. Hopefully there's no more unscheduled gravel on the route. If there is, I'm going to be going at a snail's pace because I don't trust this thing to stay together over the bumps. And from here forward, including all the way home, I have to treat this as a damaged machine because I don't know what else might be compromised in the front end, steering-wise or whatever, after a serious down like that. The front wheel didn't impact anything. It was a side down, so you know, probably just tweak the front wheel alignment, the fork alignment. Yeah, it's just expensive to replace. I mean, one single panel isn't much, but when you got to replace all the panels like I'm going to have to do now, all four front panels plus the front two trims need to be replaced. So I've got six pieces that have got to go. It'll be about, I don't know, 300 bucks, maybe a little less. can't tell man straight yeah it looks straight yeah it looks straight oh, car coming left trying to motion for those guys didn't want them sneaking through behind me I can tell my mount is wonked on the helmet. I've been trying to bend it back straight, but <laughs> it's not aligned. I'm seeing the world crooked. Got gravel in my gloves. Yeah, maybe this is my, uh, my penance for not going to church today. Have some gravel, you wayward soul. That's a gust of wind out of nowhere. What's that? For some reason, you're, yeah, you're, you're. you're on both sides. Yeah, on both sides. I went down right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Get the splash from multiple angles. <laughs> Yeah, I took a good hit on my right elbow too. I felt that right as I was getting up from the pavement. 
or from the gravel, whatever. Uh, but I don't feel it now, so I don't think I lost a lot of skin, but it was a good impact on my right arm. I need to inspect the uh, the jacket and the armor in there. This thing's got D3O armor in it. It's really good for uh, impact protection, so. You need it. If I didn't have that in there, I'm sure I would have broken my elbow on that not, not spill. I would have at least chipped uh, a bone or two because it was right square on the point of my elbow where I went down. So I was trying to get my hands out away from up being under the bike because when you're under the bike, that's uh, that's where a lot of injuries happen because you got that additional weight coming down on top of you. had a split second to uh, make my corrections and <laughs> hope for the best. Throw the chin out forward so you don't face plant direct and that's all you can hope for. It feels so weird riding this thing with the handlebars crooked. Yeah, I mean, it's so far off. I'll just wait till we're done tonight and I can loosen the uh, fork clamp bolts and the axle bolt and tweak it back. Shouldn't be too hard. Because my front wheel didn't hit anything so I, uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, twisted tubes or, you know, bent fork tubes or anything like that. It's just the handlebars. That's a good case for ABS uh, in any capacity. ABS on this might have prevented the front wheel from locking. Uh, again, I wasn't in the front brake. I was in the rear brake, but they're linked, and the front wheel still locked when I went over those big, chunky gravel marbles. And uh, if it had ABS, it might have been able to prevent that lockup. It was out of my control, obviously, because I wasn't trying the front brake. I was trying the rear.
<laughs> yeah. So I'm just replaying it in my head. It's always funny, at least in my head, the, the damage assessment that I do anytime I go down on dirt, you know, I've only been down on pavement once in my career, but uh, been down more times than I can count on dirt. And before I even get up, I take physical inventory. Okay, what hurts? What is not normal feeling before I start moving stuff? That way I don't exaggerate an injury, you know, like a broken ankle or a broken you know, wrist or whatever. So I was laying there for a second going, all right, <laughs> systems check. <laughs> and you're like, are you okay? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm <laughs> just thinking it through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what I immediately, yeah, yeah. I, I've been better, but yeah, let me, uh, let me assess and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Yeah, the first thing I replayed in my head was the crunch when my chin hit, uh, and I was, you know, I, I opened and closed my mouth a couple times, and I checked my teeth to make sure I didn't lose something, uh, and that was all good, and I, I gently moved my head side to side, and I was like, okay, no pain, no problem, so now move down the, down the tree, you know, and the next thing that I immediately felt was, uh, you know, the bike on my right ankle and right boot and the boot was heating up because of the hot exhaust i was like uh, yeah can you get the bike off me <laughs> no because uh, when you panic if you do have an injury you start making it worse so i learned a long time ago because i've you know i've dislocated stuff i've you know i've cracked bones and done all kinds of nasty stuff so i guess that's enough experience to uh be be quick but cautious with your initial assessment if you start to move and you feel you know stabbing pain or whatever you stop moving uh, on a dirt bike of course or a bike with a chain you want to make sure that you know you're away from that chain if the rear wheel is still spinning or whatever uh, and the hot exhaust obviously you want to get away from the the hot or moving parts as quickly as you can but I figured I wasn't in any grave danger there. It was just heating up pretty quickly on my leg. Left. That's yeah, okay. We have a big crowd, so we'll just keep them all together. Oh yeah, that right knee hurts like a son of a bitch. I can tune it out as long as it's constant, but if I go and move my knee and it scrapes on the jeans, it hurts even worse and wakes me up again. They're not torn, but I've got a big pressure scrape. Pressure scrape underneath, yeah just a transfer scrape so all of my skin is on the inside of my jean leg <laughs> it's gonna be a good raspberry on my yeah uh, well it, it won't protect you against that you still end up with a big raspberry even if you've got pads and all that and you go down like I did you you lose skin no matter what you do because it's the transfer the pressure transfer that just scrapes you away uh, yeah the top of my kneecap is uh, gonna be goose egged up I can feel it swelling I lost more skin there than on the top of my thigh I think just based on my pain levels that I'm feeling shit happens As I've said many times before, this is not smart or safe. <laughs> it is cannonball. Good ruck. Yeah. Well, and Adrian and I 
were so surprised that we never downed those cubs in all that time because you know we did so many miles carrying those trailers and the cubs are even worse on gravel than this is because the tires are just skinny 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 and they uh they dig in and you you just have no control when it starts to go sideways uh it's very hard to correct it before it gets out of shape but i actually think that the uh, the trailers that we had behind us were our limiting factor and on the gravel it was probably a good limit because we didn't get moving too fast because we were always wary of those trailers dragging us around and causing us a problem so we kept our speeds down and uh, every time the bikes were sliding sideways or threatening to stuff the front end like this one just did we could dab a foot and recover it quickly enough. Yeah, if we weren't uh, if we weren't carrying those trailers behind us, I think we might have gone down in a few of those gravel sections uh, a couple years ago. Just five mile an hour faster on a lot of those roads, and probably wouldn't have been uh, something we could save. Three hundreds go. We can scoot over and let this guy on the cruiser go by us. Yeah, he's coming through. <laughs> yeah their road sofa's out on the open road but I just I could never get used to all the noise and vibration that's just not my thing right yeah I prefer smoothness, efficiency, and uh, reliability over anything else. So if that means it's a little bit bland and boring, so be it. Yeah. 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 Well, I've owned two Harleys. I never had one of the really big full dress, uh, you know, touring Harleys. But, you know, just the big V twin is not really my thing. Uh, or the, you know, the V twin anyway. It's so noisy and lopy and vibratey. Uh, even my Ducati 
Uh, it's a big 1100 L twin, and it's okay. Uh, it's it's vibey, but purposefully vibey, and it's a sport bike. So it's only you know you're only doing that because you want to get out there and get rowdy and it's got a very particular mood to it so i can deal with that when i'm in the mood to do that i don't want it as an everyday i don't want it as uh you know something that i've got to tolerate in day-to-day -day traffic Well, the ones that I had were the little Sportster 883s, and they're pretty vibey. I mean, they'll they'll vibrate you to death. And I just, you know, I tolerated it. It was okay. I was using them as a commuter bikes, and they actually got pretty good fuel economy for you know what they were. I was getting like mid 50s out of them. That's good. It was better than my bigger touring bikes that I had at the time that were only turning, you know, 35 miles to the gallon, 40 miles to the gallon, maybe if I was being nice to them. right turn Two hundred and eight miles to destination. Got about four hours to go. Almost. Spray a little back teen on it and get back to business. Yeah, I'm gonna have a pretty good hickey on that leg. It's uh it's swelling up. My thigh is swelling. I can feel it where I took some rocks. And when I got up, I had these giant three-inch stones that I was laying on. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's what's uncomfortable. That, yeah, that. Basically golf balls. Yeah, so that's another uh, a good 
go get across the road there fella that's an old ass uh, Ford Aerostar I can't tell what that is um, that's another good case for the uh, ADV 160 because it's got ABS I mean so does yours uh, front ABS brakes on it that would help in that situation yeah yeah you got ABS oh this doesn't yeah no they didn't introduce ABS even as an option until the 2019 on the PCX uh, and then I think even now it's optional I don't know if it's standard or not Fifteen. stuck with it though uh, I'm in pain but I'll live okay welcome back to the torture uh, uh, welcome back to the day <laughs> we're a hundred miles out from our destination we just did the winds IGA checkpoint there and uh, decided we were coming across the street to get some hydration and sit down and get some air conditioning for a minute and I can't get this camera straightened out this mount got ganked uh, that was Jenkins IGA then we have two bonus points in the end I'm voting for the end but if these two are on the way and they're on pavement fine if I see one more chunk of gravel I am skipping it and going the opposite direction I'm just I'm sick of gravel this bike and I and gravel are not friends we're all uh, mortal enemies at this point and I'm not doing any more gravel <coughs> I knew it was happening. It was going to happen eventually. There's just no way around it with this tires and the way this thing handles. So. I didn't want it to be a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it kind of became that. Maybe just... Pre Predictive analysis, maybe, instead of uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, all right. Uh. Okay. What's that one? Where's my other one? Ow. Uh, I heard you talking, but I couldn't ask what he or hear what he asked you. Yeah, yeah, good point. He's he's got a point. We we signed up for this shit. We signed up for this shit. This is all voluntary. Ouch. The only problem is once you're in it, there's really no getting out of it because you've got to get from A to B. <laughs> and if you decide halfway through, well, I I want to get out of where we are. These kind of roads, whatever. There is no other way out of there. You got to see it through. So once you're in it, you just committed. Yeah. Yeah, right. Three, two, one. Uh, okay, let's get synced up and I go, I go, I go. I go, ouch, I go, ouch. Oh, that really hurts. Cannot bend my knee. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm following you, sir. I'll try. I'll try. We got 13 miles to Waynesboro Highway. Yeah, 13 miles. Oh, God. Yeah, I think I'll be just in time to get there, and my leg is going to be 
really swollen and pretty much immobile because I can bend it right now but even just sitting down at the uh, table to eat that pizza getting up and bending it again it's uh, letting me know the girls had uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen they gave me two shots of each so I'm rolling with uh, pizza power aid water whatever that stuff is body armor that's it body armor and uh, two Tylenol two ibuprofen so hopefully they'll start working on me reduce the swelling in my knee would be great probably have to get an ice pack or a compression pack or something for it tonight so it doesn't end up the size of a cantaloupe by tomorrow morning I don't even know if my camera is right I didn't ever look at my lens is my lens good yeah it's chipped the bottom corner of it's chipped but it seems to be intact I never looked at it It's a brand new camera too. I just bought this one for the trip. Uh, I have a previous Hero 11 that I've had since what last uh, October, and uh, it also suffered drop damage. The, the helmet rolled off of my seat and broke that lens cap. So I got a new one, but the new lens cap isn't as good as the original GoPro one. So I put the new camera on here to record the trip, and the other one is my backup camera now. So with this busted lens maybe I need to see if it's obscuring the uh, the visual at all if it is I've got to switch lens covers Yeah, GoPro was running a really good deal on them uh, for GoPro Plus subscribers. Uh, it was stupid cheap, like two forty nine or two ninety nine, something like that. Not even three hundred bucks for a brand new Hero Eleven. Uh, everyone else is selling them for like three forty nine, and I want to say I paid under three hundred. I saw the the deal for uh, GoPro Plus members, and well, now I can't can't pass that up that's cheaper than any of the other cameras it might have even been 249 whatever it was it was way under 300 bucks it's a good deal yeah right And what did you get? It was the Action 3. Which camera did you get? Oh, Hero 8. No, I thought you had a, a DJI or something as well. I can't remember. You were just having trouble with the encode settings, or what was the deal? The, yeah, the encode or the render, yeah. So it was the bitrate settings or something, and then YouTube was clobbering it and making it look like crap. VP9, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it just gives the secondary encoding at YouTube more to work with, so yeah. Yeah, I had that problem with some of my early footage that I was doing on the GoPros. Uh, I was encoding with, you know, GoPros app or whatever it was, and the 
bit rate that it was using was too low essentially so then when Google went in and re-encoded for their stuff it was chunky it was very blocky it was hard to look at and I, I would view it side by side on the screen you know my original versus what I was getting off of YouTube at the highest resolution and it was like night and day it was it was awful so I had to go digging around and figure out other ways to encode and that's when I just decided all right fine I'm gonna get Adobe Premiere and then I've got control of the encode settings uh, instead of that crappy encoder app from the uh, GoPro applications so. I do everything in 4k now yeah I switched over once I saw the difference in final quality coming off the streaming services I decided, okay, I'm going 4K with everything. I'm going to record everything 4K, uh, and then if and when the uh, the streaming service re-encodes, you know, for different bit rates or whatever, at least they've got the maximum amount of visual information to work with. And if it's scaled back to you know to 1080 or whatever, then it still looks good. So. I'm curious to go back on some of those early videos and reopen those old projects and re-encode them at a higher bit rate uh, or with, uh, you know, upscale them to 4K and see what they look like. I bet it would be really good. Big ass files, yeah. The raw files and the encodes, they're huge. My average 30 minute video in 4K uh, with the bitrate settings that I choose to get the quality uh, are 18 gig output files. Yeah, and that's just the output. The, the raw video is a lot bigger than that. Pretty much, yeah. I've got a fast connection, so uh, you know, a 20 gig file will upload in under an hour and then processing yeah processing usually takes another 30 minutes uh, sometimes a little longer just depending on how busy they are uh, but I've noticed that now that I have more videos or maybe it's the bitrate settings that I'm using they're faster at processing my videos now than they used to be uh, and I've heard that from other people but I've never been able to verify it or quantify it but the rumor is if you're a really small channel with, say less than 10,000 subscribers they don't give you as high a preference in their rendering queue and the more subscribers you have the higher priority you get in the rendering queue for the the re-encode you know when they're they're reformatting it and it, if you when you first upload it, it does the SD version then it does the 1080p then it does the you know 2160 and on and on and on so or 1440 and then 2160 so usually the 4k is the last one to be processed but i get my first renders within a minute or two they're fast uh on the youtube side and then my 4k usually takes another 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes sometimes but it used to take hours so uh, since my sub count has gotten over 20,000, i've noticed that Anytime I submit a video, it's done almost immediately. Uh, and 4K is even available right now. There's no waiting. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have heard that too. Right, right. I've read that too. I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, the better, denser video file you can give them to start with, the better the output's going to be.
Yeah. Early, yeah. Yeah, there you Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done the same thing. Yeah, and that's the balancing act. I've I've gone through that same decision tree trying to figure out okay well how old is too old and is it still relevant or not whatever usually with these long ride vlogs series or you know trip videos like this i can take my time because the event is done already everybody knows the event is finished uh and then it's just however long it takes me to edit them and whatnot so my ride vlogs and the other day-to-day -day shit i get those done faster in the editing queue because they're they're quicker to turn out anyway there's less editing involved and they're more of a current state of affairs you know what's going on and what's coming up next that sort of a deal and sometimes i'll hint at the videos that i'm editing and producing in the background uh, but those kind of act as fillers more or less just to keep the algorithm happy that i'm posting something because if you stop posting for more than 30 days you get dropped out of the uh, recommended feeds real fast so you've got to produce at least one to two videos a month to stay in a high ranking uh, recommendations kind of a thing. So yeah, yeah. And I've noticed mine has done the same because I haven't posted anything in like, uh, no videos. I've done lives, but no videos uh, in about a month. And uh, normally my channel has been growing at about 700 to, 850 subs a month pretty consistently for a long time and my stats right now are down to like barely 400 this last 30 days additional subscribers so i'm still gaining subs but it's tapered off and it's much slower and my revenue is down by like half so at a thousand subs you're over a thousand aren't you How many? Oh shit, I thought you were like a thousand and change. Oh no, we need to fix that. We, we get you monetized. Yeah, I, I think they've actually dropped it now. It's only 500 subs to monetize. Uh, but it used to be a thousand subs and like 4,000 watch hours or something like that. And then you qualify. So yeah, we definitely need to get you uh, bumped up and monetized. I thought you had passed that a long time ago. Uh, all you need to do is get 500 subs and you can apply and it should work out just fine yeah 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 It'll work, dude. It'll work, and you'd be surprised. That right there will get you a shit ton of clicks and subs. Well, then then you need to get some b-roll stuff you can even get free b-roll off of uh, creative sites on the web just get a bunch of free b-roll and get some history about the the place and do some slideshow kind of action and intermix slideshow with b-roll with moving motion picture because if you do just a slideshow and you're talking to it that's boring but if you add like video clips of motion and you know different stuff uh, and give the history about it would be pretty cool yeah 0.7 oh, the girls must be overheating again I hope they're doing okay they're just running slow yeah they're well they're running slow to keep the heat down
I wonder why they're overheating so bad. That's just crazy. It's not that hot out here. I got stuck. We got a pedestrian, so she moved over. All right, now we're good. Yeah, so if you can find a way to uh, gamify it, you know, or make it interesting about the history of the place or uh, come up with a gimmick or something just to draw people in. But if you're not actually doing uh, a tour of the place or whatever, then you should keep the total length of it fairly short, you know, three to five minutes or something like that. That way people don't get bored and click out of it or leave a thumbs down because it was clickbait. So you have to get right into the content, you know. Yeah. Yep, we missed a turn. I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking either. I'm just gonna flip a shitty right here. We got a clear road behind me, so. <laughs> the girls were about to overshoot too. I just. Yeah, I just, I was motioning at them and they, I saw her front end dive. <laughs> she nailed the brakes. Yeah, glad our misfortune helped you. <laughs> yeah, right as we passed that intersection, I looked down and we were off track. Ah, crap, that was the turn. 19 miles to Pryor Road. It's a damn shame they're overheating because they could just be busting ass and getting there, you know. Those things run. Oh, yeah, man, they'll do 75, 80 miles an hour. They could be there sucking down margaritas right now. <laughs> they were saying, uh, you know, we've got all kinds of meds because Lisa went down. Uh, she's got a big gash on her arm and. Uh, some other stuff. I don't know when it happened. I think it was day one or something, but she's on all kinds of medication. She's on antibiotics to control infection and fever because she's been running a fever. And uh, they've got muscle relaxers and painkillers. And, you know, she opens up her war chest of uh, meds and she's like, you want this? You want this? I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Not right now. I still got to keep riding. And so maybe when I get there, a painkiller and a big glass of whiskey and just go to sleep <laughs> uh-huh yeah well she was already messed up by that point I think she was dealing with uh, the fever and infection and stuff from her arm so I, I think her wreck must have been day one or two. I'm not sure. She said, I, if I remember right, she said she didn't ride the previous day because she was dealing with fever or whatever, so they trailered it. And then she rode the next day. But she was not, she was not feeling right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be out here in this heat with a fever, feeling shitty you know, dizzy, lightheaded, just out of sorts because of a, a fever, and then you add this kind of heat and humidity on top of it? Oh, hell no. That's cruel and unusual punishment, man. And granted, we did sign up for this, but uh, I think I'd do the support truck option and just lick my wounds. Because if you're not, 
mentally there you know if you if you got that other shit going on in your head it divides your concentration and then your chances of going down again are pretty high yeah and not having any fun and the whole purpose behind this is to have fun <laughs> right until i crushed my leg <laughs> shit fucking gravel Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm still having fun. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy every minute of this shit. Uh, and and if I were on a dirt bike with proper gear and I went down back there, I'd be laughing it off. You know, it's just par for the course. But on a machine that's not designed for any of that shit and it's got to get me another, you know, 1,500 miles down the road, whatever, to get home, I'm not really enthused about this. I think it'll hold together. I just have to duct tape the fairing nine ways to Sunday. And avoid gravel at all fucking costs. God. Yeah. It's mixed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's mixed. I mean, every now and then... It just absolutely sucks and you're like i want out of this but there's no way out you're committed to it and then other times it's fantastic you know you come over a, a blind rise and you're overlooking a huge field or something like that and it's just gorgeous and it makes all the other shit that you just endured for the previous hour that you're accursing it makes it all worth it it's definitely a mixed bag Yeah, <laughs> that's right. There's nothing like it. You got that. All in all, the net result is more positive than negative, but uh, it's uh, sometimes it's almost equal portions of pleasure and pain. You know, just the mind-numbing torture of slow rolling when you're ready for the day to be done, but you can't because you got to be there to start the next day. And if you screw up finishing the day you're on then you're really screwed for the following one it can be done but it ain't fun that way like uh gildo he was saying last year uh, 21 god i keep saying last year two years ago for the 21 cannonball when his uh, vespa blew up he went the very next day and bought another one a red one so he could complete, you know, complete the event. He, I think he had to drop out or he, he DNF for everything because you can't change scoots in the middle of the game. So he, uh, he got that scooter and he rode, he, I think he said 800 miles or 900 miles to catch up with us for the next day. So he basically had to do two days in one to catch up with us so he could start that next day. Holy shit. Yeah, 900 something, I think he said 900 miles, I can't remember what it was, in one day on a Vespa. Damn. V uh, Gildo. Dildo. Yeah. Yeah, the big, the big, the big Italian schlong. <laughs> uh-huh. Fucking 900 miles on the saddle of one of those. I don't know what, yeah, that's, uh-uh. Uh I mean, they're, they're fairly comfortable, but they don't handle even as well as these things do for long slogs on the highway i don't think i've ridden one and they're nice but i don't know they just don't feel all that stable at you know 70 80 miles an hour which you're gonna go because it can you know so you're gonna push it and of course you're trying to crush eight or nine hundred miles in a shot you're really going to be pushing it so oh man you want to talk about wearing you out mentally and physically yeah Yeah, and when it died, we were up there in those northern states, so it was long 500 mile slogs, 450, 500 mile slogs every day. So yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, you just slow boat it and do whatever you want. Yeah. It. It doesn't, no. It, it, only if you've got a deadline that you're trying to reach, you know, I've got to get home by a certain day, whatever. But when you don't have the, the pressure of the schedule, 
you can slow boat it and go, you know, I'll, I'll ride a couple hundred miles or, you know, wh whatever. If, I, if I'm feeling good and I'm mentally alert, shit, I'll do five or six hundred miles, whatever. But you decide when you want to stop and there's no, uh, there's no quota. Inevitably, I have the, the barn door syndrome though. When it's done, I'm ready to get home and relax and get in my own bed and that kind of thing. Uh, but this year, I don't think I'm gonna rush back, especially now that I fucked up the bike. I'm not gonna do a iron butt going back. I'm gonna take it easy, take at least two days to go home. So that would still be 450 miles a day, which is a long haul, you know, 10 hours a day kind of deal, but. Yeah. Well, you're going to have at least one more day, maybe two more days than me. Because you got to go all the way out to Utah. So that would be... Have you looked at the, the mileage? You're probably 1,700 miles out. Yeah, it might be over 2,000. You're at least 1,700. And I'm just doing rough math. Because I was uh, 15 or 1,600 from Katy out to California. So... Yeah. Once you get to the, yeah. Once you get to the boring shit in Kansas, then there's nothing to see, right? Yep. Yeah. The Ozarks are fantastic, man. If you go through uh, either Arkansas or Missouri, uh, you, those roads don't disappoint. My box? I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop on here. Yeah, I'll click it. I thought I got that damn thing closed, thank you. Cause I would lose my gloves or something expensive out of there. I must have opened it. I don't think so. All right. Oh, goddamn. Ow, 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 ow. Well, that's all relatively speaking. God, it's hot. Holy shit. A thousand percent. Okay, go, go. Oh, uh, I can't deal with this, man. I'm rolling. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me know that was uh, open. That could have been bad. Hit a couple of big bumps and my $350 gloves go flying away. Fuck. And I wouldn't realize they were gone until I needed them in the next rainstorm. Man, I'd love to make a trip out to uh, Utah. You could show me some of your uh, dirt stomping grounds. Maybe uh, in the fall, before the weather gets too cold, uh, I can get my XT running again and make a road trip out there, take a, a five-day trip or something. It'll take me a couple days to get out. I mean, we'll have to coordinate with your work schedule, of course, but uh, it would take me probably, you know, comfortably two days, maybe three days to get out there spend a day or two dicking off and then two or three days back so about a six seven day trip for me yeah yeah really cold yeah especially at night
Yeah, I enjoyed. How far away is uh, your town? You're in Vernal. Are you in Vernal? Where are you? Vernal. Yeah, however you say it, Vernal. So you're in Vernal. How far away is that from like Nine Mile Canyon and all that? Nine Mile Canyon. Okay, so it's not too far away. Yeah, that I enjoyed that area a lot. And I didn't like that fucking dirt road, but uh, oh, it's shitty, man. That that it's it's like a logging road. All right, everybody, we're at the next to the last bonus point for the night. We think it's this. It's been renamed uh, from what it was on the picture, but it looks like that. It was something convenience store, and now it just says Food Mart. We're hoping that's it. I just swapped batteries because this one in the chin camera has been dead. Almost as dead as my fairing. And uh, we're ready for this day to be done. We're not done yet. Oh, the gnats and the mosquitoes are insane. They're swarming me like crazy. I thought they were gnats at first. They're mosquitoes. And the sun is still out. What kind of evil mosquitoes are flying in bright sunlight like this? It's crazy. They're in my helmet. Oh, gross. They're in my helmet. <laughs> Like a swarm of them. Oh, come out of my helmet. Get off. Go. Alright. We should get rolling before the mosquitoes eat us. Yeah. Fucking infestation. Alright. Pardon my French. Uh, go. Ooh, go. Whew. I get run over by traffic trying to evade gnats and mosquitoes. We must have a lot of standing water over here because, woo, buddy, they're thick. It's not even dusk yet. Uh, we're closing in on the final mileage. I'm not sure what our destination time is here. Uh, it looks like 53 miles. So we got another hour on the road. There's one more bonus point if we choose to stop for it. As long as it's on the way, we'll do it. Uh, and then uh, the finale of this... Uh, 2023 cannonball run. Oh, when I went down in the dirt, I even lost a reflector in the from the impact, I guess. Crazy. It looks like my exhaust is bent in a little bit too. I think it is. Yeah, it went down hard, so I'm surprised that I didn't impact my box here. I definitely impacted this guy. Maybe that came off and hit this, I don't know. But that reflector is bent in and I lost the outer reflector. Oh well. It's just a reflector. Oh my god, these mosquitoes. Gnats, whatever they are. What the hell is in the way? Go! This bag is over, box is over full, and I can't shut it half the time. I'm gonna repack today. Oh, I'm getting swarmed. Jesus. Ugh. Ah. <laughs> Going up my nose. Hey, we beat that group. I thought they were ahead of us. Ugh. thing is falling apart man cannonball is brutal I'm gonna move away from the gnats uh, maybe I can escape them for a minute they're going up my nose they're in my eyes oh my god they're brutal hundreds of them over here just swarming me uh. say what yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to start rolling. You good? I got to get away from these uh, gnats. They're just driving me insane. I'm going to roll slow on the shoulder. Just. God, these. Side stand. You rolling? I see it. All right. Can't sit still. The gnats are driving me bonkers. Yeah, that helps too. 
Oh, it's so hot, man. No, oh, it's so hot. Okay, we got 4.4 miles, a roundabout. Looks like third exit on a roundabout. We're gonna find out as we get there. Holy shit, tizzle is it hot. All right, another hour of this and uh, we'll be home free. Well, finish line anyway, not home free. Home free is another couple days down the road with a busted scoot. Okay, traffic circle. Second exit. That's first exit, this is second exit. It's straight through. The picture looks like uh, third exit, but yeah. Good rock. Good rock. Yep, we're still on path. Yeah. Hmm. It's gonna gnat up my nose. Little bastard. No hitchhikers. Ah! Hmm. Draw bridge. Well, it's not drawed yet. Oh yeah, that's squirmy feeling with these tires. You, yuck. Oh god. Well, considering how low this bridge is, I guess it would have to be a draw bridge. How do they get stuff through here? Yeah. Building something new on the other side of this. Okay, six more miles. This guy's passing on the left, watch out. Hurry up and wait, genius. I'm not gonna have much but a ass of a semi to look at. This is a 35 zone, everybody's doing 60 plus. Yeah, okay. I guess we'll do as the Romans do and uh, keep on hauling ass. Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. It's a swamp land. You know the mosquitoes are thick out here at night.
Okay, we're coming up on our bonus point, whatever it is. I'm gonna zoom it. Yeah, we're within a quarter mile. So we're gonna find out what it is. I hope there's a safe place to stop. South Carolina, hey, we finally got here. We're coming up on it. Uh, it is just after the little bend here. Yeah, this is it. So I guess we just take a picture of this sign. Yeah, good enough. I guess we can get the other side of it, why not? Yeah, let's get the other side of it. Oh, right here. Where are you going, man? Are we supposed to go in here? No. We don't need to go in. Where are you going? I think we just get this sign out here on the street. Ow, my knee is killing me. Oh, you're taking a leak. Owie. I think his calm died, too. Man, that thumb is swollen. Let me check the book. Pretty sure this is it. National Wildlife Refuge, just the sign. Just the facts, man, just the facts. Oh, fudge buckets. It's so hot out here, and the mosquitoes and gnats are already swarming, man. I haven't even been here for a minute. Damn, man. Give me a break, man. the gnats are bad. Uh, I hope you're done with your potty. I think I lost you. Yeah, no worries. Picture and we roll. Is this the sign? Yep. And then it's uh, about 45 miles, no, 33 miles to home base for tonight. Done. Oh... Oh, the gnats are bad. Three, two, one. And here's the rest of the crew rolling in. We've been staying just ahead of them, barely, 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 barely. <laughs> okay, Tyler's lost comms, but he is uh, ready to roll as I see him staging behind me. Oh, thank God, air conditioning. Whoo, man, is it steamy out here. Welcome to Savannah, where you're going to dehydrate in a puddle of your own ball sweat. All right. Buddy, it's hot out here. Let me tell you, this forced air conditioning is about the only way to survive in this. Yikes. Welcome to Savannah, where you're going to dehydrate and drown in a puddle of your own ball sweat. Buddy, it's hot. Man. It's so hot out here, sweat is dripping down my forehead from the crown liner in this helmet. It's dripping down like right next to my eye on my eyebrow and I gotta keep like shaking and winking my eye to keep it away from my eyeball. Man is it humid. 94, 95 degrees today is the uh, temperature that we're pulling up and uh, out here with all this humidity. 
the heat index has got to be 105, 108. I don't know what it is. Friggin' miserable. When we're moving like this, it's tolerable, but man, stop moving. You start sweating profusely. And I'm getting a hotel room tonight. Forget sleeping in the dirt. Uh uh, ain't happening. Not tonight. Unless it's just drastically cooler when we get out here to the coast, but I kind of doubt that. Coast is only 31 miles away from here. I don't, I don't see it changing that drastically uh, in that short of a distance. Need to take a shower, nurse my uh, leg and my knee. I have to stop by a drugstore somewhere see if uh, the hotel has a first aid kit or something like that. I'm going to clean up this uh, raspberry I've got on my thigh. Oh, bump. And uh, I'm sure I've lost a bunch of skin on my kneecap, so I think I'll just get some gauze and uh, some neosporin and pack it lightly, you know, just kind of keep the fabric off of it overnight and then hopefully it'll uh, skin up a bit, you know, scab up for tomorrow and then I can get some laundry done tonight hopefully at the hotel put on clean clothes over it instead of the dirty stuff I've been wearing for a week now uh, I'll uh, try to get some laundry done at the hotel tonight maybe I need to go to a uh, Walmart or somewhere that I can get uh, some boxer shorts or some kind of a, a temporary wear item you know cheap swim shorts something like that so I can wash my two pair of jeans don't have any other attire and I don't think everyone would appreciate me walking around with uh, little Jim and the twins uh, swinging in the breeze when I was younger it used to be big Jim and the twins but I'm older now so it's little Jim <laughs> shrinkage everybody we're getting close to the finish our comms died his died like 20 minutes ago mine just died about five minutes ago not that I was talking to anyone <laughs> uh, we are uh, crossing the bridge here onto the uh, Hilton whatever island I don't know and uh, the weather is nicer out here it's a little bit cooler it's still pretty humid but it's a bit cooler probably eight degrees or something uh, we're ready to get off of these bikes and I'm ready to nurse this right knee uh, I don't know how much battery I've got in this camera so I'm just gonna give you the the roll into this and then I'm gonna save it and uh, the roll into the uh, hotel complex and I should be capturing stuff on my other cameras but I wanted to at least capture that bridge and let you know where we are so uh, be right back stay tuned for the uh, finale the roll-up and uh, i will be doing a live stream after this you will have seen that already uh all this is going to be edited in post but you know through the uh magic of uh forward backward time editing uh yeah we'll try to include some of that here so stay tuned okay we should be just about there we're looking for forest beach drive hanging a right and that should be the hotel so we're looking for the the hilton hotel or whatever that is so this is it Ooh, sketchy here sketchy here this must be the hotel a lot of foot traffic a lot of bicycle traffic and a lot of really really aggressive cagers okay so where's the hotel look for scooters do we see scooters anywhere straight ahead it must be here or there do you see scooters scooters don't know scooters I think we have to go past. It says zero. I missed it. I missed it. Whatever it is, I missed it. It's got to be in one of those parking lots and I just can't see it. So I'm going to turn around. It wasn't visible from the street. I was thinking I would see uh, a big old, big old uh, welcome cannonball run sign, but no. He's going around the back. Oh, 
Holiday Inn Express. This ain't it. Where's he going? Oh, he turned around. <laughs> I'm going to be a hoodlum and go on the sidewalk. <laughs> it's right here somewhere. I don't know if it's left or right. I don't know. Left or right. One of that one or that one. Go in there. Go in there. It's got to be there. Yeah, scooters, right there. Well, this is one busy jumping place. And it doesn't seem like there's uh, much uh, order to the chaos. But I'm not waiting. I'm going to lane split. Get through this nonsense. All right. Is this Scooter Cannonball? Scooter Cannonball? Scooter Cannonball? Uh, scooter Cannonball here, yeah? yeah picture. Where? Anywhere. All right. I'll get out of the way. Where's check-in? I don't know. We're looking for scoots. Where do we go? Johnny, where do we go? A lot of people go down to the end by the beach and take Let's a picture there. Cool. All right. Cool, man. I made it, minus plastics and some skin on my knee. <laughs> At least no skin off your ass. Yeah. So we don't have a check-in or organized uh, arrival uh, thing tonight. That's a little odd. Hey, there's a scoot. I'm going to park it right here. We're taking a picture of the bike. And the beach. I would love to take it on the beach, but that's probably a really bad idea. Okay, we have arrived. Lots of music in the background. I'm going to keep talking over it so I don't get a copyright strike. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to take my pictures, and I will catch you guys in a few minutes. Uh, sans music. See you in a minute. All right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, quasi after party. I don't know if you can see anything. It's uh, dark out here, and... My camera's all wonky, and <laughs> I don't know if anything works anymore, including my cannonball brain. I'm supposed to continue on the traffic circle on some street. I'm looking for Holiday Inn Express, and the GPS is not updating. I think I go back the way I came. Is it updating? Is it updating? Is it updating? I'm going to go back the way I came in, because I remember passing this Holiday Inn Express. Uh, the guys have got a room. And we're all going to be splitting it. There's going to be like five of us in there, which is just fine. Holiday Inn Express. Holiday Inn Express. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn? Shit, did I pass it? Uh, yeah, I can't see squat. My eyeballs are uh, fried. Yeah, I think it's smoking crack. It didn't update. It said that I was going the right way, then I'm going the wrong way. I'm trying to find the Holiday Inn Express. I don't know where I am. It's dark. My night vision is uh, suboptimal at best. Uh, I'm going to go around this way. I'm going to come out on one of the back streets over there and hope for the best. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll be staying in the Holiday Inn Express. Uh, no, I'm not a real cannonballer. But I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> I don't know where I am. I'm going to figure it out. Um, I think the live stream went well. Uh, people were not able to hear my interviewees. Uh, I was mainly just trying to get everyone's take on the holiday or on the... Uh, the uh, cannonball and if they were gonna do it again uh, and a lot of people are saying yes they're uh, they're up for it and thanks for the bright lights jack off uh, yeah anyway uh, I'm gonna continue wandering around aimlessly until I find this Holiday Inn Express and uh, it might magically route me where I'm supposed to be uh, turn right, turn right. Turn right okay so I'm going right on Lagoon Road and then right again and hopefully I can avoid these traffic circles that uh, do not seem to update and tell me which hole to get out of. 300 feet, Avocet. Oh, that was probably it. 150 feet, Avocet. Yeah, this is it. No, it's not. But I'm going to make it it. Yeah, that's Avocet. Welcome to Wandering in the Dark with a blind as a bat quasi. Quasi blind. Quasi blind, almost blind. 450 feet. Okay, I'll go there. Turn right on the Forest Beach Drive. 
this place is a friggin' madhouse, let me tell you. There's so much humanity wandering around doing crazy stuff. I just witnessed a, a really nasty fight in the parking lot of the hotel that I left. And, uh, you know, they were getting weapons out, trying to kill each other. Second exit, okay. Uh, yeah, and it was all over somebody's flip-flops, I think. The, saying somebody stole somebody's flip-flops and they were doing a beat down drag down right in front of my scooter and I couldn't get my uh, key turned on in time to uh, record it on the dash cam that would have been kind of entertaining for a uh, uh, closing video <laughs> cannonball crazy uh, yeah so first exit second exit second exit I need to get here which is where I thought I was, but where's the Holiday Inn Express? Turn right onto Tanglewood Drive. Tanglewood Drive. A thousand feet. Holiday Inn Express. Yeah. My mount is crooked, but uh, the quad lock held onto the phone during the crash. It's a pretty good down, man. I, I took a whack. I'm surprised I didn't, uh, didn't injure anything more than my pride and my uh, right kneecap. Turn right, Turn right. And there it is. That's the one. That is the one. Holiday Inn Express. And the boys have already got a room, and I just need to settle up with somebody on some money. So where do I go? How do I get in? Do I scale a balcony? Uh, or do I park? Or... Yeah, what do I do here? This is a pretty uh, vacant place. What's going on? I, I'm not understanding. I don't see scoots yet. Is there a front, a back, a side, a round, a round? I don't know what is going on here. What? I, oh, fuck, am I lost or what? This is bullshit. How is this it? Pardon my French. I'm tired, and this doesn't make any sense. This is a parking lot for the Holiday Inn. Is it on the other side, too? Because I don't see the guy's scoots, and this doesn't look like what I want. But these are the bus boys. These are, this is uh, the Bradisher and his uh, buddies, and that's the bus that I was talking about. So it's a school bus. Uh, this is the handicapped lift and uh, it's uh, hydraulic comes down it's got an extension on it so you can load the scoots right on lift them up roll them in fantastic they're selling this probably for a very good price okay holiday Inn express is this the holiday Inn express how in the f do you get in this thing is it the next parking lot these look like apartments over here these have got to be apartments man what's going on it said holiday Inn express but I don't see any parking lot for it. What kind of bass backwards logic is that? Uh, there's a Can-Am here. These are like apartments, man. I am in the wrong place. This sucks. Welcome to Quasi After Dark. Wandering around in the dark in an unfamiliar area where you can't see skadiddly. And the terrain makes absolutely no sense. You all saw the Holiday Inn Express sign, yes? Where the fuck is the parking lot for Holiday Inn Express? Because there's nothing back here, and I guarantee they got more going on here. Where is the parking lot? I don't see the guy's scoots, and I know the guys are here. They said, come on over. How do you get in this place? What is this? What am I looking at? I'm going down the wrong way, and I really don't care. This is messed up. It said Holiday Inn Express. I'm getting angry. These are apartments. Yeah, Tanglewood Villas. I'm going to go the wrong way down the friggin' sidewalk if I have to. Because it's one of those nights and I've absolutely stopped giving a shit. Hoodlum. Holiday Inn Express. Where is the parking lot? Where are the people? Where am I? Why do I not see anything? Yeah, I'm a hoodlum. I'm driving on a sidewalk and a cop sees me and I'm going to get a big ass ticket for it. But this makes no sense. That is the smallest hotel I've ever seen. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to go back because it doesn't make sense what the F is going on. That is the smallest parking lot I've ever seen. And there's nobody there. What is going on? Holiday Inn Express. I'm looking at it. You're looking at it. It says right there. That's Holiday Inn Express. The parking lot is empty, as in vacío. This doesn't make sense, man. I'm gonna have to call the guys, see where they're at, because this this is bullshit. Uh, there's the uh, 
the bus boys and uh, none of my guys are here although they said they were here I'm going to see if there's another Holiday Inn Express because this uh, not making a sense why are there no cars here why are there no scoots here all right I'll find out I'll get back with you guys later okay this is truly bizarre this parking lot uh, is apparently linear it goes way back like way back down the street here this is all Holiday Inn Express what kind of bizarre nonsense he said you got to go like two or three blocks down this street and there's a parking garage I'm I'm so confused it's a little bitty hotel then there's like a whole lot of this trees and bullshit and then there's more hotel back here and a parking garage what do the signs say hey my lights are geeking up yeah so this is all Holiday Inn Express, this whole thing back here. This is weird, dude. Weird, weird, weird. Okay, so they said that they are in the uh, parking garage. Cool truck. I see other scoots here. We'll keep going. I don't know if I go in this entrance or somewhere else. i got to find a parking garage. Man, this is a weird setup for a hotel. It's like a resort, but there's no signage, at least that you can read in the dark. It's a, it's a hotel that's like two city blocks three city blocks long that's strange it's first for me hey hey uh, yeah that's that's weird ah that looks like no that's the building he said it's under the building so maybe that's the garage I shall circle around but yeah I'm lost man it helps when you're or doesn't help when your night vision is absolute crap so that looks like a garage yes okay so I'm gonna park in there and yeah I know that guy I know that guy hey can I park there I know I know one of these guys that uh, that I, I know the guy that has that trailer I'll spin it and put it right there in front of this one This is the weirdest hotel layout I've ever seen. You pull in off the street and it says Holiday Inn Express and it's just a tiny little building, but then all the rest of the hotel and the parking is three blocks down the street. That's bizarre, man. It's bizarre. This guy driving a couple different ways. He's got technology for his Oh god damn that hurts. Oh yeah, I'm tired, man. I'm not functioning well. Uh, my leg really is hurting now. The swelling is uh, getting uh, getting good. The swelling is getting good. And I have not self-medicated yet. I have not had alcohol or any more uh, analgesics of any flavor. So, yeah. Um, welcome to Cannonball. <laughs> a little more drama this year than uh, my last one. And uh, got to love the uh, aerodynamic improvements I made to the, uh, to the PCX. Good stuff, huh? I'll catch you all later. Thank you.